Come on in, everybody. Samdy's in the house. I miss you, Samdy. I haven't seen you in forever. There's Mr. Uh, Arnold Schlegel. <laughs> I'm here. I've been practicing that name. Yeah. <laughs> How do you do that? All right, it's because the two of you have your in the same office. Yeah, yeah. So, very cool. Very cool. So. 12.03. Well, we want to uh, respect those people's time who get here on time. So, so thank you. We'll go ahead and kick things off. Looks like Brian's coming in. Okay. And, uh, Hello. Happy New Year. Our uh, resident Sage superstar. Appreciate you being here, Brian. Thank you. So, uh, Dawn, if uh, if you wouldn't mind, would you like to kick things off for uh, 2021 first sales I'm meeting of the year? Yay, I would be honored to kick it off. I just want to first of all say happy 2021 to everybody. And we are going to focus on this being a better year than last year for sure. And I don't have anything exciting. Insurance is still insurance. We're still competitive. But I just wanted to thank you all for your support last year. I enjoy working with every one of you. You're keeping me super busy. So that's a bonus. And I look forward to working with you and your clients in 2021. So keep being you and let's do this thing. And, uh, and, and well, thank you for that, Dawn, and, and we certainly appreciate you. And for those of you uh, who maybe don't know, Dawn is our resident insurance specialist. She's with Long & Foster Insurance Company, and, uh, and so she's, she's very, very helpful when it comes to providing home insurance quotes uh, and all sorts of quotes, really. But, uh, but we primarily look to her for flood cert quotes for flood insurance and uh, homeowners insurance because... Those are two things that uh, you may have to have in place before you can close on the purchase of your next home. Yes. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you. Cool. Mr. McCarty, how's, uh, how's life at Sage this year? Brand new well, year, 2021, baby. Beautiful. It's beautiful. We had a, we had a fantastic year. Um, hope everybody did on your end. Um, happy new year. Um, December was especially busy. So I know I saw a lot of the agents from the Suffolk office. We greatly appreciate it. Um, we were three times the volume this December than we were last year. So we were kind of running crazy, but um, we've got Hannah Parker in place. She's here today doing a great job. She entered in about 10 orders just the other day. So orders are coming in like crazy. So thank you very much. Um, we are going to have an auction class in February. I'll get you the date, but it'll be for CE because I guess there's not a lot of inventory. So I've got some requests to bring the auction guy back to some getting how to get some other properties through the auction process. So I, um, I'll get you the date, the flyer, but I'm excited to do more CE this year than last. Um, what else is going on? We got a new phone system. I came in Monday and our phones didn't work. And they, what happened was they wanted to uh, pull us over to Nextiva. And so we're now on Nextiva. We just got it in now, but our cell phones have been blowing up the last few days, just trying to, because our main number wasn't ported anywhere. So we've got that straightened out. So if you were trying to call us uh, this week, I apologize. Uh, you probably didn't get through, but um, anyway, it's it's great. Our capture rate, I think, Jason, I think it finished out at eighty-eight five seven. I have for the year, which is amazing. That's it amazing. Really is. That's, a, that's a number one in this in this region. So thank you very much. Um, also, I have a hybrid closing. Look how small this thing is. I've got this one at one o'clock. Prosperity's hybrid. This should take me like five minutes, right? But they've already signed all their docs, went over everything. And this is just saving paper, saving time. And so I applaud uh, Prosperity for coming out with this hybrid. That's about all I have, unless anybody has any question, comments, criticisms for the new year. <laughs> no, that's, that's fantastic, Brian. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the update. And uh, 
Yeah, thank thank prosperity for those hybrid closings because that looks like it was about five pages. That was it. So that's yeah, this cool. is it. Thanks, John. Yeah. So yeah, that's very cool. And so for for those who might be on here who, who aren't familiar with Brian yet, um, so Brian is our uh, resident uh, closer, and uh, he's with Sage Title Group, which is a Long and Foster uh, company. And, uh, and so he's just another one of our fantastic team members that uh, works really hard to provide us the best possible service. So um, thank you, thank you for, thank you. for what you do. And uh, if we can get Dawn's capture rate numbers to look like Brian's, man, I think Dawn would be bouncing off the walls, buddy. Oh. <laughs> so, so we're working on it, we're working on it. So, uh, but uh, speaking of a core partner who does have a great capture rate, that's uh, John and, and John is with uh, Prosperity Home Mortgage. And so I appreciate you jumping on, John. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm actually going to be talking a little bit about mortgages uh, before the end of the call. So maybe you'll pop in later as well. Sure. Um, but, uh, but please, if you wouldn't mind, kick it off for 2021 and Prosperity uh, Home Mortgage. All right, happy new year, everybody. I'm sorry I was late on the call. Um, Hope you guys had a great holiday. Um, we had a, a really good one uh, uh, over here. I was able to take a little bit of time off between Christmas and New Year's, and we uh, took the family, took the boys up to uh, right outside of Snowshoe. We didn't we ski or anything, but we just uh, there was some snow there, so I had the kids were able to play in some snow, which is pretty pretty fun. So I feel like it's, it's pretty uh, hit or miss here <laughs> in the last couple of years, snow wise. So it was cool. So I had some time to unplug and and. Um, recharge a little bit, which um, I think we all need. I needed it for sure. Um, so I definitely feel like a, a brand new person and I'm ready to hit the ground running in 2021. So 2020 was a interesting year. It was like no other year I've ever experienced in my entire life, right? I'm sure that's true for all of us. Um, the real estate market was incredible. Um, rates were low. We had to do things in a way that we've never done them before. But I mean, as a team together, as far as you know, the agents and, and Sage and um, insurance and obviously the leadership, um, you know, Stacia, everyone has kind of really stepped up and, and we're able to kind of do things not just the same way, but even maybe sometimes better. We're doing things in a different way. We're doing things more virtual. We're depositing checks differently. We're just, you know, basically we've all adapted and it's been pretty cool to watch. Um, so hopefully we can kind of get over the hump and um, some will get back to normal in 2021. We'll, we'll see how long it takes. Um, so, but you know, most of all, I just want to thank everybody for their support in 2020. We had a really big year. Um, I closed, um, uh, 360 loans in 2020 for 98 million dollars. Um, so it's it's an average of 30 a, a month. Uh, so it was, a, it was a the biggest year I've ever had in my career. Um, so it just kind of shows you scope wise the, the market was working like. So it was it was a big big year. So we'll see. It, we're forecasting that in 2021 uh, we should you know have numbers as far as the first quarter to first six months rate wise will, will stay really low. Um, and the, so the refinances will stay a, a big part of the, the mortgage business for that period at least. And what that means is just like we, we experienced from pretty much April throughout the rest of 2020 was a volume level through the mortgage industry it's unprecedented. So meaning that it's just a high level and that is impacting the processing of every single step of the process. So everything's taking a little bit longer. Now you guys are used to it and you've heard me say this every single call, just how long it's taking. It's impacting appraisals, uh, title searches, um, uh, processing times for underwriting and verification of employment, all that stuff. So it's just impacting the, the, the processing time. So it's just taking a little bit longer for everything. So thanks for being flexible. Thanks for bearing with us. And, 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 you know, we, at Prosperity are laser focused on the purchase side. We know that refinances will come and they'll go. And at the end of the day, the purchase side of the mortgage business, that's what's sustainable. The relationships with agents is the most important thing that we have in our company. And we don't ever lose sight of that. So we, we have preferential treatment for for purchases, um, we, we kind of push refis to the back of the line as, as needed. I mean, they're important, but they're not as important, right? No one's gonna 
generally be left in the cold in a moving truck if they don't close on the refinance on, on a certain date. So we know that, we get it. And uh, that's kind of our mindset. I, I'm copying on you know, 100 emails a day with the top people in my company about individual loans that I'm working on for each of you every day. Like, hey, what's going on with this loan? Do we need to get the package out? Where are we? Let's skew it. Like, you know, they're, they're proactive, they're involved. So there's no other mortgage company out there that's as big as we are that's at that engaged and involved in the day-to-day -day closings of specific loans. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. So very active, engaged leadership. And that's why I'm here at Prosperity because we're, we're purchase centric and we're, we're committed to the purchase side of things. Uh, so anyway, so that being said, interesting things in the market right now, we saw um, the uh, special, the election, you know, the runoff election in Georgia, it, it looks like that the, the, um, both seats might flip to a uh, Democratic control in Georgia. Got uh, Rachel in the background. Sorry. Uh, it's okay. And then, um, so what, what that means is that it looks like the Senate will go to 50 50, potentially. It's not over yet. And the market wasn't expecting that. I think they were thinking maybe one, not both. And obviously, as we all know, that with the 50 50 votes in the Senate, the, the vice president will break any tie. And what that allows the Senate to do is to introduce legislation easier um, as opposed to, you know, having the, Dem the Republican control of the Senate where things would have been stymied or slowed down or not even introduced. And so the market is digesting that fact. It is going to, it's going to take a couple of days to really see what the market thinks of that. Um, what I've seen is that the market is pretty, is, is actually okay with it. They're, they're, they're not thinking that it, with a 50-50 level of Senate that even hugely progressive things can be pushed through the Senate, um, through Congress. So massive, you know, tax overhauls, you know, meaning specifically massive, max, uh, massive tax hikes for the, the corporate side of things. Two, two things, one is they don't think they can get through the, the, with the votes. Two, with the way that the pandemic going on, having massive tax increases to businesses is just something that doesn't make sense. So I think the market knows that. And um, it really, it, it opened actually a, a surprise. The market actually opened um, positive today. And, you know, so that, that's an interesting thing because uh, everyone thought it was, we were going to see a huge collapse. So time will tell. Um, but as far as rates go, all forecasts, basically say in the short to middle term, they're going to stay low. And um, if anyone tells you th that they're going to spike in, in a couple months or, or by a certain time in 2021, they're either, well, all I can say is they're not, no one knows for sure. That's all I can really say. And if everyone tells you it differently, it's just not, not the truth. So right now, all we know is in the current time frame, we're going to get a good rate environment which should kind of keep us, you know, strong into the spring and should kind of keep fueling the fire of um, that we're already seeing in the real estate market. And what I'll end on, I, I had this question on a, uh, a call yesterday was my, my thought on, will we see a, a large impact uh, from uh, REO, distressed property, once we see the uh, moratorium on evictions and foreclosures lifted in the next um, couple months or the next six months. So and my, my answer was yes, I think we will see a, uh, an increased um, amount of REO in our market and all markets across the country. Now, with that said, I think our market is a little different because Hampton Roads is disproportionately fueled by government spending, which has been obviously stable throughout the whole pandemic. So that really helps us as far as the, the amount of properties that are tied to government jobs and, and incomes, not, not everybody, obviously there's lots of people who have been impacted, but, but larger than say even Richmond or, or um, other places across the country, we are, might not see it as bad. But I do think, I think it's naive to think that there won't be a, 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 a nice, you know, probably a, a big bump of foreclosures to enter the market. But I think our inventory is at a spot where we can easily absorb that. Um, I, I think that the smartest thing the government did 
in the CARES Act was to approve the, um, the forbearance of people who had government-backed mortgages, which is most people in the United States, and let them stay in their homes. They learned a lot from 2007, 8, and 9 of when people lose their homes, how that impacts the entire economy and how it's a domino effect that lasts a lot longer. So the, the foreclosure jobs have been almost none because there's been a moratorium on them. People are able to go into deferment. But as that gets lifted, um, we will see um, some impact to the market, maybe a little slowing in the market with just di di digesting those properties. But I think it's going to be fine. So other than that, um, does anyone have any questions about the process, I guess, or I, I got kind of the weeds there that's not really impactful to mortgage specifically, but just to the market in general? So uh, the consensus seems to be that, you know, we expect rates to stay low, uh, which is great for, you know, the buyers uh, and, and the market in general. Um, there may be an uptick in foreclosures and REOs uh, looking forward, uh, but with our inventory being so ridiculously low right now, we should be able to absorb that without too much of a problem. Um, and it may, I mean, it may have an impact on the acceleration that we're seeing in home prices right now um, and, and maybe help to, to buffer some of that advanced home price acceleration uh, that we've seen the last couple of years. So, so I think, uh, I think all things considered, you know, things are looking really good. Um, you know, even if we do get a, a little influx of foreclosures and REOs, I don't think that it's going it, to, it's, it's not going to be harmful, uh, in my view, from, you know, a real estate agent's perspective. Um, the overall market appears to be uh, in a pretty secure, safe place right now. So not going that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. I want to remind you guys too, all of you, that uh, John and Brian, both Prosperity and Sage, have uh, mobile-friendly mobile phone apps uh, that if you don't have, you should have, uh, and you should be able to share those with your clients. Um, you know, there's a Prosperity Home Mortgage app, and it's got all these fancy calculators depending on the type of loan that you're getting. Uh, and it's going to, you know, help you figure out exactly what the payment is. And you can adjust the uh, taxes and insurance and all of that stuff uh, that, you know, potential buyers and, and sellers like to look at. So uh, if you're not using that Prosperity app, reach out to John and make sure that you have access to that so that you can share that with your clients. And it's co-branded. So it's got you and John uh, on the app. And uh, it also notifies you when your clients are in there tinkering around, uh, playing, with, uh, playing with their mortgage payment calculators, uh, you'll get a notification so that you know uh, exactly you know, what your potential client is, is looking at. So uh, really, yeah, really the, good idea. The say is uh, don't, uh, don't text them while you get that update. It looks yeah. a little creepy. Yeah, yeah, a little, a little, a little creepy if, you're, if you come across as a stalker, but, hey, uh, but it, does, <laughs> it does at least notify you uh, and then you can make an educated choice in, in when and how you want to respond. And then, uh, and then Brian over at Sage, they've got a fantastic product uh, that helps us determine what the closing costs are going to be. And so one of the things I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes is, is closing costs. And I'm going to share my screen and give you some examples. But, um, but Brian's got a great tool at Sage uh, that you should have access to and you should be using. Uh, to help you tell your buyer or seller exactly what they should expect when they get to the closing table. So um, just wanted to throw that out there as a reminder. If you guys aren't using it, uh, please check it out. Uh, Dawn, I don't know that you have an insurance uh, tool, but, uh, but um, you know, it, it would be nice if there was an app to figure out flood insurance, but I don't think it exists yet. I don't think so. And I don't think there's anything in the works, but that doesn't mean I'm not pestering people about it. So, uh, so Dawn is our app for insurance. We just uh, <laughs> save her phone number on speed dial. And, uh, and that is all the app you need for insurance needs. Well, I've so. been called a lot of things, Jason, but never an app. So <laughs> <laughs> he is the insurance app, the only one you need. So very, very cool. So 
Well, thank you very much to the core partners. I'm going to uh, switch over and do some screen share. Uh, a couple of cool things I wanted to, to point out to you guys. And uh, on the topic of closing costs, I think we'll start with that. And so let me figure out here how to um, share my screen. And then, uh, so here we are. And so this one. All right, hopefully you guys are seeing this. This is the uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the CFPB. And one of the tools on their website is this loan estimate explainer. Because one of the things that, you know, Prosperity has been talking about for a long, long time is their ability to compete in the marketplace. Uh, and when we get a client to do the apples to apples comparison, most of the time Prosperity will stand a really good chance of winning uh, that deal or that loan, if you will. And this is used for purchases uh, primarily, but refinances as well include closing costs. But for those of you who aren't necessarily familiar with what closing costs consist of, this does a fantastic explanation. And it goes through every box on the closing disclosure or the CD that your clients will get. And so my advice then is for you to become familiar with this. And this is a great resource to help you learn what each one of these boxes means uh, in the closing disclosure, because chances are very good that your buyer um, may not have bought a home in the last three, four, five, ten 10 years or ever. Your seller may not have sold a home in the last three, four, five, ten 10 years, if ever. And so these documents and this process is all new to them. Uh, and so the more knowledge and the more information and the more comfortable you are with this information, the more comfortable you can make them and help them be a little bit more at ease through this process. And so uh, obviously, you know, somebody like John, uh, who's in this every day, knows this stuff like the back of his hand uh, and can answer those questions. But I don't think we as real estate agents can ever have too much knowledge. Um, and I, I think, you know, when we have knowledge, we become more confident. And I think confident, confidence is what our clients look for, uh, right? They want to work with a real estate professional who is competent and confident uh, and can answer these types of questions. So uh, all of these boxes, I don't know if you can see it, but you know, when you hover over one of these boxes, it highlights it over here on this side of the screen. Uh, and of course you can make this bigger and smaller and if you can click on it and it gives you the definition. And, and so there's a lot of great information on this website that I would encourage you to check out. Um, it breaks it all down for you in easy to understand terms. And so, you know, I just recommend making sure that, you know, you take a few minutes to familiarize yourself with the closing disclosure so that you can answer questions uh, for your active or future clients. So any, uh, any thoughts on this, John? Um, I know that you probably look at these things all the time. Oh, sorry, I just took myself off mute. Um, it's, a, it's a really good tool. I mean, I think it's just good. It's really good to, be, to compare apples to apples. And really the loan estimate is the, is what we need to really compare apples to apples because otherwise without an itemization, you don't really know what you're competing against. So that, I really like, I'm glad that you brought this up because I don't think I've, I've ever seen this tool, but um, it's, a, it's really good. But one thing I'll say is a lot of times you don't get a loan estimate until you're already under contract or already in an active application. So sometimes to compare, it's, it's, it's harder to do because once you're at that point, you're already down a path to a certain lender. Sometimes you're using what's a loan worksheet, which is a, a kind of an equivalent to a loan estimate, but it's not a formalized version. So, um, but even that, most lenders don't even send that out. So we, uh, but knowing what a loan estimate looks like, so you can talk, um, with your customers about if they have questions about, especially if you're trying to get them to give us a chance, knowing what you're looking at, um, it, I think this is a, a great tool to use. Absolutely, yeah. And so I think the more information we can share with our clients, the, the, the broader our chances are of getting them to, to you know, consider getting a second opinion. 
And uh, one of the things I love about John when he sends out those, you know, proposals or estimates is it's always, in my case, it, it's generally more than one, right? Here's two or three uh, or four different scenarios that you as the buyer might consider. Um, and that's not something that I have ever experienced with different lenders. So I appreciate that, that you take the time to do that, John. Uh, that, I think that's really, really helpful. Uh, and it provides the buyer, you know, enough information to make an informed decision. So, um, but I've got this, uh, the URL, I don't know if you guys can see it here, um, but I'll send it out, uh, consumerfinance.gov forward slash owning a home loan estimate. Uh, but we can send out this URL so that you can have access to this tool and just familiarize yourself with it because, you know, it's, it's, it's really good information to, uh, to have at your disposal should one of your clients ask you, you know, what does this mean? Or what is this fee? Or what is this cost? Um, and so it goes into, so really, really good detail. So cool. All right, and let's see. Any questions about this while we're on it? And then I'm gonna go into something else. Nope, okay, cool. So if you guys have not been here recently, uh, I wanna encourage you to uh, take a look at Foster. Obviously, this is a fantastic tool. Um, there's a lot of great stuff in here. And what I was looking at today, um, for my own personal reasons, I was in the gallery, uh, the marketing gallery here, and they're always adding new cool stuff here. And of course, we don't get notified Every time they drop in a new video or a new social media meme or something like that. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in here that unless you come in here and look for it, you wouldn't know that it's here. But I do think it's part of the value proposition of Long and Foster having a marketing team in Chantilly that's always putting out great content. Uh, and so one of the things I wanted to point out also is when you get here to the Foster dashboard, if you click on this link right here, it'll open up this second page, Foster Products and Support. And so if you go down this list, these are all of the, the links or tools linked to the these. You know, like if you click on this, you've got several options, right? Um, green, uh, red, black. And so when you go over to this page, then it tells you what does that mean? And so any of the tools that have the red asterisks are tools that are paid for 100% by Long and Foster. And so you can scroll down then through the list and you can find those things that are paid for uh, in which category they might fall in, right? And so you can see there's a lot of stuff here that Long and Foster pays for and provides uh, as tools and services for the agents. Um, and then there's a lot of green uh, and green are Long and Foster partner companies that Long and Foster has pre-negotiated a discount with. So those are also great resources for you to check out. So you can just kind of scroll through the list here. Bomb Bomb, obviously Bomb Bomb is my favorite. That's how I record my TGIF uh, every week. Normally that's $600 a year, uh, but through the Long and Foster affiliation, it's only $300 a year. Uh, and you get an upgraded uh, membership uh, with limits on uh, how many you know, contacts you can put into your database. Um, so they've negotiated a really good deal uh, with BombBomb. Bomb and, and of course, I encourage all of you to check that out. Um, I emailed somebody a video, what was it a couple of days ago? And, uh, and she replied yesterday and she says, oh my God, I love this. I'm going to call you tomorrow. She had never received a video via email before. Uh, and I think that's true for a lot of people. Uh, and I think we make a unique uh, and memorable impact when we send somebody a video email uh, because chances are really, really good, they're not expecting it. So uh, put that out there. But there's a lot of green, there's a lot of red. And then of course the, the, uh, the black things here that aren't highlighted necessarily uh, are other popular products that Long and Foster agents have recommended. So, uh, and of course they're all linked and you can go and check those out as well. So. Bold leads, for example. Bold leads is something that a lot of Long and Foster agents have found success with. Uh, I tried it personally. 
here at the office and we didn't find a lot of success with it. Uh, but there are a lot of other options here for you to consider. So uh, I wanna make sure that you guys know about this, know about these tools and, uh, and how to access them. So where I happened to be today was the marketing gallery. And so I basically was here. I clicked on this link here to go to the gallery and that opens up this page. You can put just about anything in here and find it. So for me personally, I was looking for AdWorks ads. So I'm, I'm planning to run some AdWorks ads and AdWorks is a company that, that advertises online and you know, a hundred different websites. And so I'm gonna run some, I'm gonna do some advertising with AdWorks. Um, and so I just went to the marketing gallery, typed it in, and here are all these pre-made, pre-designed templates that Long and Foster has used in the past. Uh, and so it's pretty cool, but you can go back to the homepage here and just scroll down for some general knowledge, general information stuff. And so social media extras, if you click on that, you'll find a library here with 112 different social media uh, posts that Long and Foster has used over the last couple of years. So they're just, and they're all here. You can download and use any of this stuff. It's beautiful. It comes across as really, really professional and clean. And so you could throw this then on your uh, social media channel, uh, whether Instagram or what have you, uh, and, and you know say something cool about it and see if you can't strike up some engagement. So, but there's lots and lots of stuff in here. And if you don't check it regularly, you don't necessarily know that it exists. And so that was kind of the point uh, of me bringing this back to your attention. There's, um, my gosh, there's, there's, um, what else did I see? Something. So they've got, um, they've got uh, videos, obviously, all of the logos that you might want to use uh, for your marketing purposes are in here and downloadable. Um, you know, we have a 98% customer satisfaction rating uh, with, you know, our 70 plus thousand clients last year. Um, cover images for Twitter, YouTube, Realtor.com, Facebook, all of these different cover images are in here. And so you can click on Facebook seasonal, for example, and then you've got a ton of different options. So if you want to change your, your, your Facebook image uh, cover photo, you can certainly do that with a professionally uh, designed Long and Foster branded image. So how cool is that? Any questions or thoughts about that while I'm killing time? <laughs> so, all right, guys. Um, yeah, just really good stuff. So don't forget that these tools exist. They are here for you. And uh, I think they're they're really, really good. So if you're into that sort of thing, if you're into the social media world thing, uh, it's a great place to go for tools and resources. So any questions, thoughts? Happy New Year's, y'all. So, and, and don't forget you guys, those of you who did uh, $2 million in sales volume in 2020, you qualified for the uh, office paid uh, Etsy board you know that thing it, it's you can do the key you can do the house you can do whatever um i know uh some of you have put your order in already if you have not please let us know um debbie is getting better and better uh filling out those order forms on etsy so uh, just tell us what you want and uh and we'll get it for you uh, and uh, of course we could make that same offer again this year um but uh, maybe we'll do something better who knows We'll see. So. Stacia. What? Stacia. What's up? You any good news for us? No. No. Am I supposed to? <laughs> Y'all know I never have any news. I'm working on awards. Yay. That's right. And my right. hurrah awards aren't due to the end of the month. So I think, um, I think January 11th, uh, is when we're supposed to have final year end numbers for 2020 is what I saw. So uh, I'm really excited to get that information because what I know is we did a hell of a lot more 
than uh, Suffolk Office has done in a long, 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 long time. And that's thanks all double. to you guys. Think all those numbers guys. double. So, wow. Yeah. So thank you guys for uh, for doing what you do and uh, and allowing me to be a part of it. So uh, with that, I will let you guys go. Um, as always, if you need me, call me, text me, email me. Thank you, Marvella. Thank you, Jason, for everything that you do for us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. See you, Cordell. Appreciate it. Dudley. Thank you. Soren. Happy New Year, y'all. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.